right good morning everyone uh, this is the last session i mean last topic in your course outline right so we have come to the 14th week now uh, hope uh, you have revised what we have discussed so far right during the last 13 sessions right uh, what i have to say you have to practice all the session review questions again if you have any doubt you can contact your friends or myself or professor pilakaratna to clarify them before going to the exam at least you have to sort out all the matters right uh, there is one announcement regarding the students who have not uh, done the midterm test right we will be uh, posting a message notice on the lms please reply to that notice right uh, right uh, working capital management or short term financial uh, short term financial planning or short term finance and planning is the topic today right as you know that we have already covered two main areas of corporate finance what are those hmm? basically we say in corporate finance financial manager focus on three main areas of the business right what are those capital structure decisions and capital investment capital structure capital investment and working capital management decisions right we have already finished capital structure and capital budgeting or capital investment decisions right so this working capital management or uh, short term finance and planning is the third one right third and most important one right this is focus on the day to day operations of the organization in order to maintain the day to day operations smoothly and run their operational activities uh, properly and to achieve the ultimate objective of the organization they have to maintain the day to day operations smoothly right in order to do so they have to have a good short term finance and planning right they have to manage their short term finance right that is the importance of this topic uh, uh, in this session these are the learning outcomes should be able to compute the operating and cash cycle and understand why they are important you should be able to calculate it and interpret it right once we complete the session understand the different types of short term financial policy company can use different short term financial policies right uh, they have uh, they can use fixed asset more fixed assets and less current assets uh more current assets and less fixed assets so they have to find any way the optimal mix of financial policy to finance their uh assets right so we understand we try to understand the optimal financial policy or optimal short term financial policy of the firm right understand the essentials of short term financial planning why this is important why this is essential for the organization should be Uh, able to understand once we finish this uh, session right right this is the uh, outline first we uh, the introduction you can read that out why firm need capital this is not actually about the short term finance so this is all about total finance of the organization right they should have long term capital as well as short term capital right can they run the business with only short long term capital can any business run with only the long term capital 
no it is not possible right why what is the importance of short term capital in uh, operations Huh? Yeah, liquidity. Mm -hmm. huh? In order to smoothly operate the day-to-day -day operations or operate the day-to-day -day activity activities, the firm should have definitely some amount of short-term finance, short-term capital, right? So our focus is. only today on short term finance short term finance planning why firms need the two type of capital ha huh? i don't want to hear my voice again right why firms need this both long term and short term capital we have already answered the question they have to maintain the liquidity right if they think about the liquidity th this is actually puzzle that firms are facing at the moment every single firm face this problem right as we discuss in the capital structure it is very difficult to find out what is the optimal capital structure of the firm right optimal capital structure is the capital structure which maximizes the value of the firm ultimately right so in this case in short term finance also the firm should try to maintain the optimal short term capital right if they maintain the optimal level of current assets and current liabilities only they can maximize its value ultimately right if they maintain less amount of uh, short term capital and higher amount of long term capital right they will be facing a problem of liquidity right so when they need money they should be able to meet those expenses right when they run the business they have to pay the day to day bills they have to pay the wages for the lower level workers every day they have to meet that expense right otherwise they will not be coming to work next day right such expenses should be uh, covered every single day right so in order to maintain the liquidity they have to maintain they have to uh, plan the right working capital management right so what is why what is working capital management what is the difference between uh, short term finance and working capital management hmm the both are same right don't me uh, mix up both are same short term financial planning is called working capital management right right when the company plans its uh, working capital they have to find out what are the sources and users of capital what are the sources and users of capital you can find out uh, examples are given for sources and users by reading these examples what you can understand what is the definition for sources hmm these in under the sources we have mentioned all the activities that increases the cash balance of the organization right if you read this obtaining financing to obtain finance we can increase the long term debt if we increase the long term debt our cash balance will be increasing debt capital will also be increasing and cash balance is also increasing increase in equity again equity capital increase and the cash balance in the firm increase increase in current liabilities what is that 
taking a bank loan short term bank loan 3 months bank loan that also increase the cash in hand cash account balance right selling assets decrease in current assets we convert our finished good to sales finished goods in, is in the is classified under the current assets when we sell them cash is coming to the cash account debit sales account credit so cash account increase cash balance increase by reading this all you can find out sources are the activities of the business which increases the cash balance right so users is the other way around users of cash paying creditors or shareholders when we pay for the shareholders or creditors our cash balance decreases right decrease in long term debt right we have to debt pay for the debt holders so debt capital decrease as well as cash uh, account decrease right decrease in equity decrease in current liabilities decrease in current liabilities means we have to pay off the short term loan we have to pay off the uh, bank overdraft cash decrease bank overdraft also decrease which is called current liability right buying assets when we buy assets assets increase right current current one of the fixed asset increase current assets decrease so if you consider the balance sheet the effect is happening to the same side one item is increasing the other item is decreasing right increase in fixed assets again so the first one is increase in current assets we might be buying some stocks right our stock value increases sale sorry uh, cash balance decreases right you can understand what are the sources and users sources are the activities that increase the cash balance and the users are the activities that reduces the or decreases the cash balance okay why this short term finance is a problem for the organizations short term finance problem is it a problem is it a problem hmm why firm need to keep some amount of cash in hand or cash in bank is it an investment keeping cash more cash in hand forget about the corporations about the companies if you keep too much money in your pocket what is the opportunity cost you face huh? interest income you will be losing the interest opportunity cost will be the interest income same thing happens with the companies locking too much money unnecessarily in any of the current asset means disaster for the company it is a disaster they are not using those money are being idling or locked up in those assets right the word is locked up we locked up those money without using for uh, what is that called uh, effective objective right we are we don't use those money for effective purpose we are not using efficiently and effectively the assets of the company right if you lock uh, if we invest too much money in current assets if we keep too much money uh, i mean uh, in hand cash in hand doesn't get anything no return at all right in order to face the liquidity problem only we keep money in your hand right when you go to the canteen you can provide them the uh, credit card or debit card they don't accept it right so definitely in order to meet the day to day expenses in your personal life as well you have to keep some amount of money same thing is there with the companies right in order to meet their day to day expenses they have to maintain some amount of money that amount is 
deciding that amount is very difficult that's why sometimes you keep too much money in your pocket thinking that i will i have to meet the uh, uncertainties right don't know whether you have to go, you, you might have to go to the doctors in the evening right you might have to uh, meet some other essential expenditure today itself you can't postpone some expenses in order to meet those uh, sudden expenses so in order to do sudden transactions you have to keep some money right you have to incur some of uh, some amount of opportunity cost for keeping money in your pocket right same thing is there with the companies right how should the firm borrow in the short run how much should the firm borrow in the short run when the firm borrow money in the short run short run interest rates are highly volatile right they are highly volatile there is no if you go to the different banks and check the rates sometimes when you uh, borrow in the short run you might have to go for a very high interest rate why this is an urgent expenditure that you have to meet right you have to uh, borrow at very high rate somehow you have to meet that expenditure right in that case we have to go for the uh, that uh, guinea poly rates right so uh, that is very expensive the firm firm so that uh, the firm should decide how much the right amount for borrowing in the short run right when we extend the customer these are some problems in the, the firms face in the short run when we extend the customers credit period for our debtors right they are the people who have uh, bought our uh, uh, what is that called uh, goods and services on credit basis we have sold them on credit basis right they are supposed to pay their uh, money within a given period right if the, if we do not decide the right period to collect the money from the customers right we have to lock too much money in debtors right which will be taking long time to convert them into cash right once we collect money from the debtors we have to meet some other expenses as well we Uh, have to pay for the suppliers the company purchase sometimes on credit basis right if we are late to payment make the payments to the suppliers suppliers will be strict their rules or conditions on our purchases you understand for the raw materials and other uh, expenses right so we have to manage our credit uh, i mean uh, both creditors and debtors collection period and all right so that should be attractive and that should that should be attractive to keep those customers with the company right and that should be uh, appealing to the company as well right so these are the short term financial problems if we increase the credit period for the creditors company is in trouble we will not be able to meet other expenses right so we might have to go for another short term loan to meet our day to day expenses because we couldn't collect money from the debtors on time right so if we are late to pay for the creditors they will be changing their uh, they will make their conditions or rules strict for the company when they supply goods or services next time right so we have to manage all these things when we think about Uh, short term finance right right uh, under working capital again working capital is defined there as its liabilities required to operate business on day to day basis we have to think about cash accounts receivable inventory management accounts payable management and accruals right all these expenses uh, all these uh, uh, current assets and liabilities should be managed to maintain the uh, optimal amount of 
working capital right these are short term in nature what is the there is no uh, hard and fast definition for short term and long term except the timing difference right there is no any uh, other definition for short term or short term capital or long term capital only with the timing difference we can differentiate short term capital and long term capital right what comes under short term if those assets and liabilities are for less than one year we consider them as short term right if it is more than one year those are called long term or fixed right yeah as i said uh, working capital management is uh, short term financial planning here our uh, aspect our focus is to maintain the balance between short term assets and short term liabilities in order to ensure the smooth operations of the uh, organization and ultimately maximize the value of the firm right and if we are to maximize the value we have to maintain right amount of current assets and liabilities right if we do not have enough current assets we will not be able to meet the objectives ultimate objective right so we have to identify how much is the inventory required for the production how much is the raw material how much is the finished good uh, we should stored in the stock um, stores right everything should be decided and uh, regarding the creditors or short term liabilities again we have to identify the right amount right in order to maintain the smooth operation if we go for more credit that is not good for the future of the organization more credit means we have our expenses will be increasing right for the creditors we have to pay some interest or some other commissions right so we will be losing sometimes the discounts that we could have enjoyed right if we are too late to make uh, make the payments for the creditors they will not be giving the discounts right that is also an expenditure for the company right therefore we have to maintain the right amount of short term assets and liabilities right why this is significant why uh, short term finance is significant for the firm if you consider the current assets of the firm it represent a very big amount of money logged in right it is a huge investment right if you take inventory cash in hand other short term investments right debtors so we have logged too much money that we could have used for some other investments in current assets right if we do not manage this the company will not be competitive or company will not be achieving the ultimate objective of shareholder wealth maximization right therefore this is very important if we uh, collect too much current assets in order to face the uncertainties in the future right that will create a cost for the firm right the money that we could have used for some other investments we have logged in inventory or we have logged in finished goods right in order to meet the uncertainty sometimes we might have to meet uh, unexpected orders of the customers right for that purpose if we keep too much stocks finished goods in the stock that create some cost for the company we have to hold, bear the holding cost we have to bear the carrying cost right 
we might have to hire some security people additional cost we have to incur on this but these uh, assets are not generating single rupee for the company right significant portion of current assets as it is being financed using current liabilities what is that that explain the maturity matching concept in the maturity matching concept what it says when we finance long term assets or fixed asset we have to use long term sources of finance right when we finance short term assets or the current assets we have to use the short term sources of finance right so in order to finance current assets we should use current liabilities right so that is the concept that is the uh, norm right so if we uh, sometimes if the current liabilities are not enough we might have finance our uh, current assets from long term debt or equity right those are the sources of financing no through that fix uh, the long term sources or short term sources we have to finance current assets and liabilities right we are talking about the balance sheet right in the balance sheet you know online students uh, can you hear me thanks my goodness what happened Can you see the uh, slides, uh, please? I want to write. Uh, no me wala lanka ghar tiyena chirangi number ek chirangi number ek tiyena
Nine students, can you hear me? Online student, can you hear me? And can you see the slides now? All right, okay. Okay, we were... Right. We were in the significance of working capital management, right? Why this is significant? We said the uh, current assets are being financed using current liabilities. Done. Therefore, uh, we have to manage the right, uh, maintain the right amount of working capital in order to uh, make use both current assets and liabilities towards the ultimate objective of the organization, right? This is an ongoing activity. Once you purchase a fixed asset, that is finished. You can take a rest. But when you finance uh, with short-term assets, when you manage the short-term liabilities and assets, that you have to do it every single day, right? In order to meet the day-to-day -day operations, you have to manage your current assets and current liabilities effectively. Uh, otherwise, it will not be supporting the ultimate objective achievement of the organization. As the financial manager, management of short-term finance is managing this uh, current assets and liabilities throughout the year, right? Directly relates to the revenue of the firm. We can understand if you lock too much money in your, uh, what is that called? stocks right so your profitability will be decreasing right therefore this directly relates to the profit of the firm ultimately the value of the firm right yeah this is very important to maintain the liquidity risk what is the liquidity risk if the firm cannot meet the day-to-day -day expenses right if they cannot meet the day-to-day -day, uh, operation smoothly they will not be able to effectively achieve the ultimate output right if they cannot achieve the ultimate output the company would not be able to meet their obligations what are the obligations dead holders have provided their money to the company expecting some returns for their dead capital right even the bank loans have been provided in the short run or long run, long run, expecting some interest on their uh, bank loans, right? In their loans, the company should operate uh, smoothly and meet those statutory expenses. If the company cannot meet the day-to-day -day workers' salaries and wages, they will not be able to. Uh, get the support from those workers and uh, what happened when i hear my voice i don't want to <laughs> right uh, what i was saying Right. Anyway, the firm should be able to manage its liquidity, right? If they cannot meet the day-to-day -day operations, day-to-day -day expenses effectively, they will be running into bankruptcy, right? They will, the dead holders and other creditors of the firm will be going to the courts against the firm they, if they cannot meet their uh, obligations, right? Yeah, ultimately, the firm should be able to manage the risk and return trade-off. If they are to manage the working capital effectively, they should be able to... Managing working capital effectively means managing risk and return. What is that? What is the risk? What is the return? Huh? Risk and return. Huh? What is the risk? What is the return? Maintaining the risk and return trade-off. What is that? Hmm? 
they have to maintain the balance between liquidity and profitability if they think too much about the profitability they will be losing the liquidity right if they think too much about the liquidity what i said before it is Yes, that uh, it's in the corner. I should touch, touch there, right? Yeah, done. Right? We were talking about liquidity and profitability. This is, these are the two sides of the swords, right? Two sides of the sword. Why I say that? If you Touch it, right? Okay. Oh, it's too much troubles today, right? Uh, okay. Let's uh, say, for example, in order to maintain, we may uh, keep too much cash in hand, right? And uh, what are the other things that we can keep? Huh? Huh? Uh, stocks is there. Yeah. Short term investments there, yeah. right? Short term securities and things like that. Sorry, this is cash and bank. What else? such uh, current assets are there right if we increase the cash balance what will happen to the profitability profitability will be decreasing is that right increasing cash balance means we the sum money has been locked in cash we generating none it doesn't generate any single profit or any single rupee to the company same as the money that you have put in your pocket right if you take uh, stocks if you lock too much money in stocks what will happen to the profitability huh? profitability will be again decreasing right the firm will be able to meet the uh, unexpected uh, stocks i mean uh, orders and all as they are maintaining a huge amount of stock right maintaining huge amount of stock mean locking up too much money or those uh, the assets are being idling right that creates an expenditure for the company it doesn't create any profit for the firm you understand so that this is maintaining the balance between profitability and liquidity is the uh, challenge that is faced by the finance manager when they are main managing the working capital of the business right so if they think too much about the liquidity they will be losing their profitability their profitability will be declining if they th think too much about the profitability and keep very less amount of cash right reduction of cash will be increasing the profitability right 
but they will not be able to meet unexpected expenses right so that is also dangerous for the company so what we have to understand here the firm should maintain the right amount of current assets and current liabilities why both are dangerous if they maintain less amount of current asset and less amount of uh, current liabilities both are dangerous inadequate and excess working capital is dangerous for the firm inadequate means that is not enough to meet the day to day operations excess working capital means you have blocked too much money in your current assets right that is also dangerous for the firm so there are consequences of inadequate working capital and uh, excess working capital inadequate working capital means companies will be losing their reputation right their goodwill will be they, it will uh, cause to damage their goodwill right the people will be losing the trust they had about the company right if they have no enough uh, working capital to run the business smoothly right what else consequences of not maintaining the right amount they will not be able to achieve the profit targets right you can think about uh, the consequences right you can uh, think what are the consequences of having too much working capital and less working capital some managers would like to keep too much money locked in working capital when they have no enough talents to manage the working capital right they prefer to maintain very big amount of working capital rather managing the working capital right so they take everything uh, easily and invest too much money in in stocks keep too much cash in hand right which is not good for the profit of the organization that makes their life easy but it doesn't achieve the ultimate objective of the organization it goes to create the maintaining too much uh money locked in current asset will be a problem for the agency issue right the conflicts between management and owners should start due to that problem without using that money effectively and efficiently to achieve the ultimate objective of the organization they lock too much money in current assets to make their life easy right as they do not want to face the uncertainty uncertainties not having those assets with the company right not having enough money uh, with the company to meet the day to day operations it is an issue for the uh, issue that should be uh, handled by the manager right they will be maintaining huge amount of money uh, or huge amount of funds would be locking in these assets right inadequate amount of money has been locked due to uh, manager's fault right so that is also not good for the company's future right yeah what are the issues in working capital management yeah we have discussed already right uh, they have to maintain fixed assets and current assets in order to uh, run their business smoothly right so they have to maintain the right amount of fixed asset to current asset ratio current assets to fixed asset ratio right maintaining too much current assets and fixed asset creates cost for the firm right so the optimal amount of current assets to fixed assets ratio should be maintained in order to uh, 
achieve the ultimate objective what is the issue here what is the issue here if they use too much current uh, the, as i mentioned before they have to use long term finance to fund the long term assets right some there would be some firms they might be used short term finance to fund long term assets that is a problem why it is a problem for the firm it is an issue short term finance is only for less than one year that those assets are they are for the company for long time right when they when we have to set off that liability can we sell that particular asset that we have financed using that current liability no there is no matching right so that's why i said we have to apply the maturity matching concept we always have to maintain uh, fund short term uh, long term assets using long term funds short term assets using short term funds right that match should be there and again maintaining higher amount of fixed assets and lesser amount of current asset is also does not answer the problem right problem is to maintain the right amount of current assets and liabilities sorry uh, fixed assets and current assets right if we are to use the fixed asset effectively for the production we need some current assets right for example uh, we have bought a new machine which produces a huge number of uh, uh, items per day right number of items that produce by uh, that machine is higher than the previous machine right if we lock all the money in the machine that we have the so the, the money that we have found from long term sources and the short term sources in that particular machine right we have raised money from long term sources and short term sources right what we have done we have purchased the machine to increase the production right when we are going to use that machine we have to use some labor sometimes we might have to use some small components to operate that machine right to use that machine for the production we have to use some current assets we need some current assets right so we have to understand the balance between fixed asset and the current asset if we lock all the money that we have in fixed asset right if we lock too much money in fixed asset that is a problem we have to understand the ratio between current asset to fixed asset fixed assets will not be able to effectively use for the production without the current asset that means we have to provide the day to day expenses operating fixed assets towards the production means providing what is that called uh, operational uh, facilities we have to provide for the operational facilities we take the short term funds right short term assets we have to use for the the machine operator should be paid every day he is a daily paid worker we have to meet that the expense every day right that means we should have enough cash in hand to meet that expenditure right if we are to use our fixed asset effectively towards the production we need some amount of current assets so maintaining that balance is the issue right yeah as i said before if we do not maintain the right amount of fixed asset and the current asset ratio the firm will be facing the liquidity or profitability problem right yeah in working capital there are basically two concepts that we have to understand 
gross working capital and net working capital gross working capital and net working capital what is gross working capital you know that this is a undergraduate uh, concept the difference between gross and net is the current liabilities we have to adjust the current liabilities for the gross working capital to find out the net working capital right gross working capital is the total current assets net working capital is the difference between current assets and liabilities right net working capital this is how we find the equation for net working the same thing right net working capital is the difference between current assets and liabilities plus fixed assets right should be equal to the sources of finance right these are the sources long term debt and equity okay by further uh, elaborating the equation net working capital what are the net the assets cash and other current assets right if you deduct the current liabilities it is called net working capital so what is the amount of cash long term debt uh, equity and current liabilities are the sources of funds right users are the current assets other than cash because we are try to find the cash balance and fix assets right we have to use that funds in current assets and fix assets then the balance is the cash amount the company maintains okay any problem what is the need of this working capital uh, for the companies again if i ask the same question that i asked at the very beginning what is the need hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we discuss is if the company cannot manage the right amount of working capital, they will be facing ultimately in simply, right, profitability and liquidity issues, right. If you take the Sri Lankan companies, uh, what kind of examples that you can give for the working capital management? Nowadays, not nowadays, a long time back they have introduced. Uh, the mobile companies how they find working capital one way of finding working capital is pay as you go packages right what you call that top up phone top up mobile phone reload right before you meet your expenditure you have to pay right in that way they collect money for their day to day expenses working capital right that is one strategy which has been introduced by companies right uh, in uh, uh, researchers have found that in sri lanka the problem is especially in the government organizations they have locked too much money in working capital right they keep too much uh, what is that called uh, stocks right uh, sometimes too much cash in hand without effectively utilizing those assets current assets right they could have invest those money in some way else in fixed asset or some other investment long term investment without doing that they raise money they uh, generate money from different sources of finance and they lock that money too much in working capital right most of the government uh, organization does in sri lanka do that in sri lanka uh, as a result of that their efficiency is very low right 
so if you lock too much money in current asset means the, those money are being idling that is not generating any profit for the company unless it creates some expenses right if you have too much stock simply if you think about that you have to hire big uh, stores to maintain that stock right so the other wages and salaries of those uh, store keepers and all security people so it's too much that is the main problem in the government sector uh, researchers also have found that they lock too much money in current assets in sri lanka especially the government organization as a result of that their efficiency has been decreased okay too many stocks uh, right any questions so far do you have any questions so far you should be able to understand what are the determinants of working capital and all right please read the chapter uh, 26 of frozen westerfield right i have uh, i mean i based the same chapter for this topic frozen westerfield uh, you have that right we have uploaded the book in the lms <coughs> right estimating working capital needs in order to estimate the working capital we have to calculate the operating cycle right operating cycle is how much is the inventory period how long is the receivable management period and the payable period right that is collection of those three is called operation uh, operating cycle right yeah it explains operating cycle is the time that elapses between the purchase of raw materials and the collection of cash for sales right when we calculate the uh, operating cycle we have to start from the day that we purchase the raw material right before that do we have any other activities to perform before we purchase the materials there is another stage that we have to focus on but in calculating operating cycle we don't focus on that right what is that before purchasing we have to order the materials right it also takes some time when we order today sometimes it will be depends on the customer depends on the supplier sometimes we might have to wait another 3 months to receive the goods but we consider for the operating cycle from the day that we purchase the goods that we receive the goods we do not bother about the ordering period the period that we have spent on ordering the items right then once we purchase the materials we have to use that materials for the production right once we finish the production we have to sell them once we sell them if we sell on credit basis we have to collect money from the debtors right that total period is called the operating cycle so what is the importance of identifying this operating cycle for the firm so it is the time of acquisition of the inventory until the cash is collected from the from sales what is the important the importance of this operating cycle for a firm yeah in order to manage the working capital they should understand what is the operating how long they have to wait to collect money from debtors 
how long they have to stay to get the ultimate production right so what is the time that we have to uh, spend on selling the product right so that is important to take the decision right that is why we calculate the operating cycle uh, same thing is explained there operating cycle equals inventory period plus accounts receivable period right inventory period is the time inventory sits on the shelf accounts receivable period is the time it takes to collect on receivables equations to calculate the operating cycle uh, inventory period plus accounts receivable period uh, uh, then again inventory period is 365 divided by inventory turnover what is inventory turnover cost, cost of goods sold divided by average inventory at the exam we will not be providing these uh, equations right should be able to uh, read them by heart right keep everything in mind uh, for the exam right accounts receive when we do some uh, examples you can remember accounts receivable period 365 days if it is not given the number of days you can assume whether it is 360 it depends on your uh, convenience you can assume right 365 divided by uh, receivables turnover or 360 divided by receivables turnover average collection period accounts receivable turnover credit sales divided by average accounts receivable right <coughs> what is the difference between cash cycle and operating cycle cash cycle and operating cycle it is the difference between operating cycle and the accounts payable that is how we calculate that is the time between payments for the inventory and receipts from the sales payments for the inventory we might have to make in advance before we getting money from the debtors right payments for inventory we have to make payments for inventory means payments for the creditors right and the receipts from the sale of inventory yeah in ca by calculating what is the interpretation for cash cycle when you calculate the cash cycle you can find out how long we have to wait or oh, how how much money or oh, how much how long we have to wait for the inventory period and the money collection from the debtors right how long we have to finance inventory and receivables from the receivables period it shows that we have to wait this much of dates to collect money from the debtors right so then we have to we can get an idea about how much money we should have in hand to meet the expenses until we collect money from the debtors right and by looking at the inventory period we know what is the amount of money that we need to finance inventory and that is for how long if it is for very long period we can decide whether we are going for bank overdraft or short term bank loan right so we can decide the source of finance based on the inventory period and the receivable period right 
if it is for a very short period sometimes we might be would be uh, using some other sources some uh, easy sources right if you go for a bank and uh, get some funds for your current assets to finance your current asset it takes some time right so we can decide which source of finance should be used to finance inventory and receivable based on the time period elapses between those uh, inventory period and the receivable period right the equations for cash uh, cycle operating cycle accounts payable period that is true no operating cycle means inventory period plus receivable period minus accounts receivable so we get the cash cycle accounts payable period 360 divided 365 divided by payable turnover payable turnover is cost of goods sold divided by average accounts payable right this is again explain the operating cycle and cash cycle this is from uh, ross and westfield you can see from the day we purchase the inventory right to inventory sold date right we are converting that to cash on so cash or some other assets on this date right this asset is being converting to a different asset on this date when we sold the inventory right this is called inventory period okay from that date to this much of period we have to wait to collect money from the debtors we sell on this date but we have to wait this long to collect money from debtors right then we receive cash once we receive cash what we have to do we have to pay for the cash paid for inventory we have to make the payments for the debtors creditors right so this is called the total period is called the operating cycle right when you deduct from this one this period is only called cash cycle right from this one also it explains the same we have cash or oh, first of all we have to we should have raw material lab and overhead right so we have creditors here we creates creditors here by purchasing uh, on credit basis material lab and overhead working progress we convert that into production then we get the finished good we have to sell them to debtors from the debtors we have to collect money then once we collect the money we have to pay for the uh, creditors that right same period is there okay just 5 minutes break right i will take 5 uh, minutes break do you want to go out right uh this one again exactly uh, i have uh, taken from the book right frozen westfield it explain the different role uh, managers role in 
short term financial problems what do you understand from here by reading this you can read this out and find out what is their responsibility right there is a purpose for putting this here in my slides what do you understand by if you read the titles of managers what conclusion you can come to cash manager definitely is responsible it is obvious credit manager marketing man credit manager is yes marketing manager is from a different department and all right uh, purchasing manager again production manager payable manager and controller we can say yes directly they are uh, responsible for finance short term financial problems what about other managers marketing manager purchasing manager and production manager why they are responsible so what conclusion we can arrive huh? ultimately we can see that every single person in the organization is responsible for the short term financial management right they have to either uh, the cash manager ultimately financial manager will be dealing with the information given by the other managers right marketing people would say okay uh, okay we need uh, this much of money for advertising uh, uh, that may be uh, current uh, what is that called uh, operational expenditure right so this much money we need for the unskilled labor for selling force right such details directly they are getting from these managers right so that it is uh, a responsibility of every single manager of the organization to maintain the right amount of short term or the working capital right yeah this is an example you don't have to do any calculation it is done this is from the book again right uh, inventory beginning ending and average is given uh, accounts receivable accounts payable net sales is the calculation of the uh, all uh, the, you can calculate that net sales uh, cost of goods sold 800 sorry 8.2 million uh the equations are again given operating cycle it is calculated average inventory opening plus closing divided by 2 right you know this 250000 inventory turnover uh that is uh cost of goods sold divided by average inventory right 3.2 eight times uh, inventory period 365 divided by uh, 3.28 111 days receivable period average receivable opening plus closing divided by 2 right receivable turnover that is uh, sales divided by uh, average receivables okay 1.15 million divided by 180000 uh, receivables period 365 divided by receivable turnover okay it is 57 days uh, receivable turnover is 3.639 times right operating cycle is you know that inventory period plus receivable period 111 plus 57 168 days accounts payable period 365 divided by payables turnover right then uh, payable turnover is cost of goods sold average uh, accounts payable right average accounts payable is 87500 cost of goods sold we have already found it, it was given in the question 820000 right 9.4 times x4 times right 
accounts payable period 365 divided by 9.4 times 39 days so cash cycle is operating cycle minus payable period 39 168 minus 39 129 days right inventory and receivable must be finance for 129 days what are the implications of having higher cash conversion cycle uh, higher cash cycle or lower cash cycle if the cash cycle is high would you prefer it or not hmm? which one you prefer having a higher cash cycle or lower cash cycle as a company what they would be prefer cash cycle should be lower right so you should be able to interpret the cash cycle right by looking at the figure right when you take some uh, working capital manage apply some working capital management strategies when you apply some working capital management strategies it should influence the reduction of cash cycle and reduction of operating cycle higher the operating cycle means lower the profitability right higher the uh, cash cycle means again lower the profitability right we have to lock money uh, that is explained uh, clearly interpreted clearly in the book please read it right so the calculation is easy anybody can do this as long as you know the equation but you should be able to interpret it reporting is important right calculation is not much important in this uh, level so you should be able to report it okay short term financial policy firm can have flexible or conservative uh, financial policy or restrictive which is called aggressive financial policy in the conservative financial policy what they do large amount of cash and marketable securities would be there large amount of inventory liberal credit policies large accounts receivable liberal credit policy means our credit period that we have given for the debtor debtors is very long right sometimes 3 months credit period but from the debtor sorry for the debtors right from the creditors we get only very short credit period firm is always trying to late the payment for the creditors and collect money quickly from the debtors that should be the policy right but in uh, flexible policy they give very long time period for the debtors to pay back their money okay relatively low level of short term liabilities what is that low level of short term liabilities they might not be maintaining maturity matching concept maturity matching principle will not be there why they might have finance their current assets from long term sources of finance from equity or from debtors sorry debt capital they might have finance their current assets because they have very low level of uh, short term liabilities right why what is the reason for having uh, by reading this you should be able to uh, understand that as well what, what would be the reason for having low level of uh, liabilities they have given long time for the debtors to make their payment right they don't have to because they have very less amount of obligations to meet in the 
short run right low level of liability means in the short run they have no much expenses uh, much payments to meet right that means they have used most of the long term sources of finance to finance the short term investments right current assets in the restrictive policy is the other way round low cash and marketable security balance low inventory levels little or no sales no credit sales right low accounts receivable relatively high level of short term liabilities low liquidity this is the entirely the other way of the flexible right in the restrictive policy low liquidity mean liquidity means higher profitability right in the flexible policy they have high liquidity they can meet their uh, day to day expenses anytime there is no problem they have blocked too much money in their current assets right in order to meet the uncertain uh, orders they have enough stocks in their uh, stores in the flexible policy but their profitability is low high liquidity means low profitability they lock up their money unnecessarily in current assets right which leads to reduce the profitability of the firm so what is the best uh, working capital management policy or short term financing policy hmm which one is the best these are the two extremes right firm should not go for either restrictive policy or flexible policy they have to maintain they have to be in the middle right being in the middle means maintaining the optimal uh, financial policy right they shouldn't think too much about the liquidity shouldn't think too much about the profitability they have to maintain the balance between liquidity and profitability in order to maintain the balance between liquidity and profitability they have to uh, manage their financial policy right using both uh, long term sources and the short term sources okay so that is the hardest part right they don't know how much they have to uh, maintain as current asset how much as fixed asset they don't know how much money they have to uh, find from the long term sources and the short term sources that is the problem that is why there should be a person to look after the uh, working capital right so this is a very hard decision right flexible is not good and restrictive is not good there are advantages and disadvantages of uh, both models uh flexible policy uh, no difficulty to meeting short term we have discussed this right cash available for emergencies lower storage cost liquid uh, securities lower uh, return right financing short term assets with long term debt which is risky we discussed this right restrictive financial policy higher return on long term assets Uh, lower carrying cost they have very less amount of uh, what is that called stocks in their hand right so carrying cost will be very lower and uh short term liabilities can be decrease more easily in event of economic downturn what is that restrictive policy advantage in the restrictive policy they have uh too much liabilities short term liabilities 
in the economic recession period it is an advantage for the company why if there is an economic recession it is good to maintain a high amount of current liability what is the advantage of that current liabilities are for financing the current assets maybe a bank loan maybe loan from the maybe we have taken uh, what is that called uh, too much materials on credit basis right in the economic downturns what will happen there would definitely be a inflation in the economy if there is an inflation what will happen price levels will be going up as a result of that interest will be go up right interest also will be going up then the creditors will not be any more issuing goods or services on the same price they are price when the price levels in the economy goes up they are selling price also they have to adjust with that right therefore they have to uh, this, that is an advantage in the restrictive financial policy disadvantage is less liquidity for emergencies higher storage cost right carrying versus shortage cost in maintaining the financial policy they have to uh, think about the carrying and the, they have to minimize both carrying cost and the shortage shortage of cost what is the carrying cost open cost cost of owning owning uh, current assets versus long term assets that pay higher returns cost of storing larger amount of inventory carrying cost right shortage cost means if we have no enough uh, uh, current assets to meet the production right we might have to go for the uh, suppliers who sell the same item at a higher rate right and uh, we will not be able to meet the sudden orders right stock out cost mean that the cost of lost sale owing to lack of inventory including lost customers right customers will not be waiting till we purchase the goods or services from outside then produce the product we should maintain the right amount of stock with us to meet the sudden orders right so we will be losing the customers if we do not maintain the right amount of current assets right so this will create cost for the firm yeah if you uh, go to the temporary sorry uh, flexible policy if you go to the flexible policy right in the flexible policy uh that is the car, uh, storage cost and uh, this is the this is storage cost carrying cost right so somewhere here is the minimum point which minimizes the total cost right in the restrictive policy this is to storage cost right and the carrying cost is this this is the point where which minimizes the total cost right so what you can say about this these two graphs
this is for the restrictive this is for the flexible policy in the flexible policy this is carrying cost right their carrying cost is high see in the flexible policy their carrying cost is high storage uh, stock out cost right or shortage cost this is shortage cost that is lower compared to that one stock out cost right in the restrictive policy right compared to this carrying cost is lower storage cost is sorry uh, stock out cost is higher for a small number of items they are maintaining therefore the stock out cost is very high right here for this much of uh, items they are maintaining their stock out cost is lower right here it is much higher compared to that one right those graphs are given in the textbooks please read that right you then total cost here is higher here this one is moderate uh, lower compared to the other one right if the firm maintains the moderate amount of current assets and liabilities this would be the best option right this is the optimal optimal total cost right if the when they maintain without going for these two extremes if they maintain this is the carrying cost this is stock out cost right so that will be minimum this uh, total cost will be this is total cost this curve is for total cost total cost will be optimized right when they maintain in the middle right without going for two extremes for the flexible low restrictive okay right uh, temporary versus permanent assets are current assets temporary or permanent huh? current set current assets temporary huh? huh what is the answer how many of you say temporary online students are current assets temporary or permanent Hmm? temporary on what basis you say temporary what is the answer online students are current assets temporary or permanent huh? is it temporary current assets you are talking about uh, the process right yeah stock we convert to the production then that is they are in the current assets again as a finished good right then it converts to debtors again it is under current assets right you are talking about the process i am asking the general figure the current assets are temporary or permanent Hmm? Is it temporary or permanent? Online students, I'm waiting for your answer. All of you say it's temporary, right? <laughs> What about uh, you two? Temporary, you? 
Tairaj, huh? Temper Ryu, my goodness, that's both. Temper, how would you tell me the differentiation or how would you differentiate between temporary and permanent? Huh? How would you differentiate between temporary and permanent? There should be a permanent amount of current assets and temporary amount of current assets to run the business. Right? What do you mean by permanent amount? We have been talking about maintaining the optimal balance of working capital, optimal amount of working capital, right? Right? What is the optimal amount? Optimal amount is the amount which helps to run the business operation smoothly, right? So in that optimal amount, there is always minimum amount of current assets requirement, minimum amount of working capital requirement. Without having a single penny in the company, can they run the business? Huh? Without having single amount of, uh, uh, what is that called, inventories, can they run the business? What is that? Uh, in safety stocks and all, they have invested permanently, right? Keeping a safety stock means it is permanent. That safety stock is always there in the company. That money you have locked in working capital. You understand? Raw material, there is a safety stock. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, raw material, uh, WIP safety stock would be there. Finished wood safety stock would be there. That's why you keep some money by uh, bearing an opportunity cost in your pocket. That is permanent. You don't uh, spend that uh, money. You always keep that money to meet the uncertainties. Right? Right? Precautionary purposes. Right? So, current assets are temporary and permanent. It is both, right? Not only temporary. Online students, will you got the point? Any questions? You agree, Kumar again? Kumar. Kumara Siri. Okay. Uh, Right, permanent current assets refer uh, to the level of current assets that a company retain, that the company retains regardless of any seasonality in sales. You understand that? What is the permanent current assets? Irrespective of the seasonality effects, company have to maintain some amount of current assets with the business to meet the day to day operation in the uh, if you take a uh, garment factory uh, just before the uh, few months before the christmas few months before the new year they would be purchasing or they would be keeping too much stocks of material clothes and finished goods right in order to meet the demands in the season right in the uh, christmas and in the new year period food uh, providers also do the same, right? So they keep more stocks during that period, but still, day-to-day -day life also people use, uh, people purchase clothes, people purchase uh, food items, right? So they have to maintain some amount always permanently. During the season period, that would be changing. You understand? Right? So, temporary current assets refers to the additional current assets that are added when sales are expected to increase on a seasonal basis. 
what is that in order to meet the new year demand the company should maintain higher amount of stock apart from the permanent stock they have to have another amount of working capital another amount of current assets right if you take the graph this would be the permanent current assets right during the season period this will be fluctuating this part shows the i mean this is the total current asset requirement right this shows the fluctuations due to the seasonal effects right so this is the combination of permanent and temporary current assets okay so what is the permanent part the, this amount should always be there in the company this is the permanent current asset requirement right to run the day to day business definitely they should have this amount of current asset right in order to face the uh, changes in the season they have to have temporary current assets right so this permanent current asset should be financed using what it is permanent it is advisable or it is uh, companies here this is the example in the favorable policy what they do they uh, maintain very less amount of current liabilities right that means they have finance total current asset requirement permanent plus temporary using long term sources of finance right in this model in this uh, policy they maintain very low amount of current asset current liabilities right that means to finance the total current assets almost total current assets they have used long term sources of finance right what are these this would be the fluctuations that would happen in the seasons right even to meet the seasonal fluctuation it has permanent current assets right in the respective policy or the other way around they have only this much of this is the up to here it shows the permanent current assets and after that to meet the seasonal changes they use temporary current assets right this is financed through the current liabilities up to here they have financed through the what long term sources of finance right okay right choosing the best policy any question any question any question how to choose the best policy Hmm? 
would you be cho choosing uh, flexible or restrictive conservative or aggressive hmm Huh? Which one would will you be selecting? Best policy will be the combination of flexible and restrictive. We shouldn't go for either of ends, right? If you go for flexible, that will be restricting our profitability if we go for uh, restrictive that will be uh, a problem for the liquidity problem for the firm right so we shouldn't go for either of restrictive or uh, flexible we have to be in the middle right When we decide the best policy, we have to think about the cash reserves the firm has, uh, firm has maturity hedging. What is maturity hedging? Maturity hedging. Uh, you did the derivatives, right? Hedging, insulating the risk against the uncertainty, right? So maturity hedging, what is that? We discussed maturity matching, right? So that is again maturity hedging here. So we always have to make sure that we have finance our long term uh, assets using long term investment, long term funds. When we go for long term uh, or the permanent working capital or permanent current asset that is fixed that is fixed for the company so it is it doesn't matter that we use long term funds to finance permanent current assets right relative interest rates relative interest rates normally says that long term interest rates are higher is it short term interest rates are when it comes to long term interest it is negotiable right so firm it depends on the firm if it is a big uh, influential firm multinational firm they can negotiate always with the bank they have so many access to the other capital markets and all so many opportunities are there anyway they have to compare the interest rates right short term and long term interest rates right anyway they have to maintain the balance between flexible and restrictive policy in order to maintain the right amount of working capital the optimal level of working capital right so this is the the compromise financial policy it is the combination of what restrictive and flexible so this blue line shows the flexible policy the the uh, purple one purple one shows the restrictive policy we should be in the middle compromise policy is the middle we shouldn't go for either of extreme right it should be in the middle
right? This uh, yellow line shows the total working capital requirement of the firm, right? This yellow, yellow line plus the pink one is the total working capital requirement. Up to here, that is the fixed working capital requirement, right? So, from this point onwards, this low, uh, yellow line fluctuates due to the seasonality effect, right? So, they can maintain in the middle of that line without going either for flexible policy and restrictive policy. Okay? Is this easy? This is not easy. Right? So, that is why we have to understand, the financial manager have to un has to understand uh, this management of short-term financing, right? If it is this much easy, like drawing this line and all, so we don't have to bother too much, right? In uh, short-term financing, short-term finance planning, they have to consider separately about every single item, cash management, inventory management, receivables management, payable management, right? So, Every single item comes under working capital affect the short term finance, right? If we cannot manage, if we ignore any uh, items comes under working capital, that will not be helping firm, firm to maintain the optimal level of working capital, okay? So, this is a very hard job, right? Cash budget, uh, this is the tool we use to maintain the short term financial planning. By preparing the cash budget, we can get an idea about what are the cash, uh, uh, what is that called, disposals, what are the cash inflows to the company throughout the period. So then we can identify what are the additional sources of finance that we have to go, how long for it, right? So, those decisions can be taken by uh, preparing the cash budget, right? Yeah, we can uh, decide the sales collection period, how long should be the best or the ideal period for credit, uh, uh, I mean, debtors to give credit facilities. Uh, we can late our payments, we can come uh, come up, uh, come to negotiations with the creditors regarding the payable periods and all, right? Then apart from if the company is not generating enough cash to maintain the day-to-day oper -day operations smoothly, then we can think about what are the sources of finance that we should approach to maintain the right amount of working capital, right? The funds that company generate is not enough. By preparing the cash budget, we know what are the expenses, what are the income the company has, right? So, by preparing this, we can find out what are the cash flows and cash outflows. If that particular net cash flow is not enough, we can find out which sources should we be going for. Right? Example, uh, this is again from the book. Uh, expected sales by quarter is given. Beginning accounts receivable 120. Collections, uh, beginning receivable plus half time sales. Right? Accounts payable 60% of sales, wages and taxes. 20% of sales, interest and dividends, 20 million per quarter. Major expansions planned for quarter 2, costing 100 million. Beginning cash balance, 20 million with minimum cash balance of 10 million. Right? Those are the details that is given to prepare the cash budget. So, it is again done. Uh, beginning cash receivables are there. You have to consider the four quarters. Quarterly details are being given. Then for that we have to adapt the 
sales and uh, these are the collections that we collect throughout the period 220 250 275 and 325 then cash disbursements are payments for account payments of accounts right uh, wages taxes these are given okay by looking at that uh, the given details you can fill this up right it is done by reading this i hope that you can understand this okay then you uh, here you get the cash net cash flow that is the difference between cash total cash disbursement and uh, total cash collection 220 minus 180 right that is the net cash flow for the period quarter one okay don't mix up then here 250 minus 360 there is a negative net cash flow in the quarter two in the quarter three 275 minus 220 this one 220 that is 55 plus again minus 15 in quarter four right so from the given details they have prepared the prepared the cash budget then this is the cash surplus or de deficit at the end of each quarter okay beginning cash balance is given this goes there now ending cash balance is 60 then we have to maintain uh, minimum cash balance of 10 at the end of each quarter therefore we have to deduct that 10 from here so this is the uh, closing cash balance 60 each quarter right so everything is there uh, in your pdf one i don't think that you can open it you have to go to this one and open this excel file right okay Ah no, anyway, in both slides, answer is there, right? If you go to this slide and this slide, answer is there, right? Don't worry that you can't open this Excel one. But thing, uh, what, what would be the decisions that the finance manager can arrive through uh, this cash balance? You can see the net cash flow is negative in the quarter two, right? So the throughout the period, cumulative balance has gone for a deficit, right? Minus 16 in the quarter two, minus 5 and minus 20, right? So what kind of decisions that he can the finance manager can take by preparing cash budget? This is a cash budget that means we are preparing this for the future right budget is always for the future no? so in advance we know that this would be the trouble that we will have to face in the future so in quarter two definitely we might have to go for some short term loans and all to cover this minus 60 right we have no excess cash in hand right by considering the requirements we have considered all the expenses that we have to meet during the period throughout the period right so this is we are preparing for the future so in advance we know that we need this much of uh, money in hand to meet the day-to-day -day operations right that is the purpose of preparing cash budget right uh, then if the cash budget uh, once we prepare the cash budget we can use these uh, sources of uh, short term borrowings to fill the gap okay if we have enough amount let's say we have uh, too much cash surplus we can think about short term investment opportunities short term securities and all we can invest our money right short term 
fresher engine we can purchase the company can invest their money right so that is why we prepare the the companies prepare the cash budget so unsecured loan you don't have to put any collateral right to get this loan secured loan you might have to show some uh, asset as a collateral to get the loan inventory loans in order to purchase their uh, inventories raw materials uh, sometimes uh, other materials that they use to do for the production they have to get the loans those are called inventory loans right uh quick quiz there are some questions also uh, down there some details are given for you you need to find out the operating cycle and the cash cycle right uh, what are the difference between flexible restrictive uh, policies right differences between flexible and restrictive financial policies right we discussed that what factors do we need to consider when choosing a financial policy right maturity hedging interest uh, we have to compare right so those are the things we have discussed this what factors go into determining a cash budget and why is it valuable when we prepare the cash budget we consider those things right uh this one answer for this calculation is also given here right don't have to go the same as before uh right that's all for today next week i'll be doing uh, probably cash management right in uh, advanced corporate uh, finance in the second semester we will be covering the balance uh today actually we did only the introduction for working capital management or short term finance then we will be going for uh individual sources or individual uh, working capital items later right any questions hmm as i said before uh, i'll be uh, winding up the class today about 11:30 any questions right i have posted some questions from the same uh, topic right uh, for some questions only you can find out the answer from the uh, slide itself for some there are only two questions i think you have to read the read the book right from the book itself answer is given just read that chapter taking one hour right you can answer that question right so there uh, there's only four questions right i'll stop today then see you next week